what a great day to sew something wonderful. I'm Kia with Kia B and I'm so excited to be back here today. We have a fun little tutorial for you planned and I just can't wait to get into it. I have um, recently really been focusing on my love of cross stitch. Not only do I have a love of quilting, but when I was a very little girl, the very first cra crafting project I ever really got into was cross stitch and that was with my grandmother. And uh, my great grandmother taught me how to quilt and um, then my grandmother and my mom showed me how to do cross stitch and I just really loved it. It was something I kind of went away from for a little while, but um, oh my goodness, all the great patterns and everything that is out there, I'm absolutely loving. And so I have spent a really, kind of a lot of time in the last few weeks focusing on that. So with Mania coming up, we've got something extremely special planned for that and I can't wait to share more details with you later, but I needed some project bags and I needed these to be small so I can store them easily. I needed the size to be able to be adapted very simply and I kind of was a little picky on what I wanted out of the project bag. So I came up with this little design. It has a middle zipper, which is great. We're gonna show you this up closer here in just a minute. But it's got a middle zipper and it opens huge. It's got a vinyl pocket in um, on the outside so you know exactly what project is in there. And so um, I'm so excited to show you all how I kind of adapted a bag pattern that I had filmed a tutorial on quite a long time ago and how I adapted that and made that uh, made it into this little project bag. So why don't you all come in a little closer. We'll talk about materials that you're going to need for this project today to make these really cute project bags and I'll show you how simply it comes together. Materials that you're going to need for today's project Start with a lace zipper or some top stitch zipper of your choice. I had these laying around and because I'm making a lot of these project bags for Mania, I wanted to use up a lot of my scraps. So I will link a similar zipper down below. Fat Quarter Shop has a really cute scallop zipper that's very similar that you could pick up. So that is a 12 inch zipper and that is plenty for our project. The next thing you're going to need are two binding strips. I say two because I do like to have the little bit of extra in case one isn't enough. I just cut these at two and a half by width of fabric. Set those aside. Now our outer fabric and our liner are the same for this project. And like I said, I really wanted to use up scraps. So I did make these the same. You will need two pieces cut at four inches by nine and a half and one piece cut at eight inches by nine and a half. I'm sorry, rather eight and a half inches by nine and a half inches. And this will make the inside of our bag. Then you'll need an outside of your bag, so a backing fabric. I've chosen this pink, which coordinates with the zipper, super cute. And this is also cut at eight and a half by nine and a half, the same as your inside fabric. You will need a piece of batting for the back of your bag to make a quilt sandwich there, and a piece of batting to make a quilt sandwich for the front of your bag. And this is just the front half. The last material other than sewing, normal sewing supplies, you will need a piece of clear vinyl. Now this is why I really like this project bag because it allows me to see quickly with what project is inside. I just ran to Joann's, they have tons of different thicknesses of vinyl in their home decor fabric. So I grabbed some, I think I paid $6.99 or $5.99 a yard. I had a 40% off coupon and I only got a quarter yard and it is going to do all 16 project bags for me with plenty of, of leftover. So this is cut the same as the outside fabric at four inches by nine and a half. We will be cutting these down. This is just giving us that little cushion as we quilt and maneuver. And then, like I said, you'll just need your normal sewing supplies. So I've got my rotary cutter, I've got a ruler, my sewing machine, some coordinating thread, and we are good to go. So let's set all of these things aside and we're just going to work with the very outer two pieces and batting. Now, something um, you could do, these pieces are pretty small, this project is pretty small, and so I don't feel like I need the fabric adhesive, but I want to make sure that these pieces are very straight. I've had them cut for a little while, so they've gotten a little wrinkly. So I'm just gonna lay my mat here and give these a good little press. 
And don't worry, this wool mat isn't warping what's underneath my cutting mat. I'm only pressing two pieces of fabric very quickly and removing the heat so it won't warp what's underneath. Now I would say if you have a lot of pressing to do, I would not put any pressing board on top of your cutting mat. It will warp that. Okay, and set that aside. Okay, now here's the trick I use to get this lined up. I'm gonna put this in the middle of my batting. This is just purely my kind of uh, trick here that I use. So I'm gonna grab some pins, and these are just flower head pins, and I'm going to pin at each corner. So I know, I'm sorry, not at each corner, at the middle of each. Pin there, and make sure that I have plenty coming through the other side. Smooth this out. Pin in the middle of the other end. Now because we've cut our two pieces the exact same size, this method works out kind of perfectly on, on where our fabric should go. So we're going to pin at the top and bottom again. We should be using four pins total. Okay. So these pins essentially mark a line for where our fabric is. So as I turn over, I have these four lines that I can match up our fabric to. And that kind of puts that right there. Now what I'm going to use is I'm just gonna use some straight line quilting really quick, just some one inch grids, and get this quilted up super, super fast. Okay, so we've got this all quilted up. I just did some really quick little squares, not a big deal at all. I wanted them to go in the opposite direction of the gingham. I think that's super cute and really quick. And you can actually repeat that process for our two larger pieces of fabric. So I'll put that aside. We have our backing, which is this pink. So I will lay that down. Actually, I'll lay our batting down first our backing fabric here. And again, I'll mark each side. I just find this method pretty helpful. It does help to line them up. Now you can use basting spray or things like that, but for such a small project, I don't feel basting spray was really that necessary for me. I can keep control of it pretty well. We'll mark those, and as soon as I flip them over, now I have my guides of where my fabric should go. And we'll make sure it all lines up. Okay, and now you can repeat that quilting process, whatever you chose to do. I chose just to use a um, friction pin and draw out my lines super quick, run them through my machine. I don't even have my walking foot on, just my regular foot, and get those quilted up. So we have now our outer pieces and our inner piece, um, our inner piece and our outer pieces completely quilted and um, good to go. Now let's go ahead and um, cut the excess batting off. This is where you're going to want to take your time and straighten up your fabric if it's gotten a little crooked in the quilting process. And don't worry if you do have to remove some. We've got a buffer in there in the sizes so that. Um, you have plenty, you have plenty of space. And for this piece, I'm not gonna cut away the excess batting yet. We're actually gonna use the front of our bag as our template for that piece. Okay, so now we've got our pieces um, cut away. We've got the excess cut away of our small outside fabric. I'm gonna flip the, the zipper over so the wrong side is facing up. 
and the wrong side of my fabric, so the inside of my fabric is also facing up. It's the right side, but it's gonna be the wrong side of the bag. And I'm gonna line these two up. As you can see, my zipper is here, and my fabric is really butt up right against there. I'm gonna use just a couple of clips to pin, or I'm sorry, a couple of pins to get that into place. Very loosely, right there, line it up on this end, and do the same. You'll make sure it's pulled away just enough so that the zipper still works, and I'll show you a trick of how we're gonna make sure that works before we sew it on. So we've got our two pieces. Now we flip it over and make sure that it's not gonna hinder this zipper. So I'll start to pull it here, and we're perfect. So it's not gonna hinder my zipper at all. Okay. So now I'm gonna flip it back over and I'm gonna sew this from this direction so I make sure I'm catching both the zipper and the fabric. And I take it very, very close, almost as close as I can to the zipper portion of the bag and backstitch at the front and end. With a very small stitch So I've gotten that sewn down and you can see, you can barely see my white thread through this pink zipper and that's fine. I'm gonna check and make sure my zipper is still working. So let's say you get to this point and your zipper is not working or it's catching on something and you're saying, whoa, 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 wait, wait. Okay, so you can fold your zipper and cut away slightly. I would not cut away more than an eighth of an inch. You wanna make sure that you do have some fabric holding on to that zipper. So we've gotten that and that's as easy as a top stitch. Now we do the exact same thing with our vinyl. And um, at this point, because I've trimmed this down and quilted this, our vinyl is a little bit longer. That's okay, just center it up and um, that will work for you. So I'm gonna flip my zipper over so the wrong side is facing up and lay my vinyl down. And you can't really use pins on this vinyl, but that's okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this whole thing over to my sewing machine and I'm just gonna guide this through with my hands. Just really make sure that it stays straight and just kind of guide this through slowly. So the zipper is actually what's going through your feed dogs at this point because the vinyl is on the top and that's a good thing. If you try to do it with the zipper or with the vinyl on the bottom, your feed dogs could get caught and rip that vinyl depending on the thickness. So again, we're just gonna butt the vinyl right up against this zipper and sew down that line. Perfect. That is the whole front of our bag. It was really that simple. Check my zipper one more time, make sure it's still working and it's beautiful. Now this becomes our template for the outside of our bag. So really what we're gonna do at this, at this time is we're gonna trim our bag to size. We're gonna layer these two together. I'm only going to pin in the center here, not on the vinyl side, just on the center part here. There's a lot of layers to get through. I'm just gonna pin there twice and make sure that my bag doesn't move. Okay. And at this point, I wanna cut down all the excess part, okay? So this is where we're really gonna size our bag. I'm gonna bring my cutting mat back over. And I know that I cut these pieces originally at eight and a half by nine and a half, but because we've quilted, they've become a little smaller. So I'm gonna trim this down to about eight inches by nine inches, or nine and a quarter is a, a good um, roundabout measurement there. So I'm just basically first going to straighten this up, make sure I'm lined up with my zipper and cut a straight edge on this side. That will give me a really good indication of where I can go from that point. Something super important and I almost started to cut without this. Make sure before you cut that your zipper is on the inside. You would have to rip out a zipper if it were not on the inside because then that zipper would be gone. So line this up straight and cut off this excess. Just like that. I 
I'm just using my mat here to line up and then line up the nine inches. Make sure that everything is completely straight. Double, double, triple check that my zipper is on the inside so I'm not going to lose that. I'm good to go. And don't worry if it looks like you're cutting off a lot, that's okay, you're really not. You're, you're making the bag the perfect size. Okay, so now we've got our nine inches there and we will do our eight inches here. Okay, perfect. So now our bag is measuring nine and a half by eight and a half, and this zipper in the middle is what I really wanted. So that's absolutely perfect. So now what you're going to do with this still pinned, I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine and just stitch right along the edge, and that establishes the stability of the bag before we put the binding on. So I'll slowly just take this over, maybe about an eighth of an inch from the edge. Take my pins out, again do a zipper check, absolutely perfect. So now the only thing we have left to do is to the binding. So I've got my vinyl pocket on this side, my fabric pocket on this side. This is looking so great and my pink is on that side and my blue is on this side. Okay, so the next thing we do have to do is just prepare our binding and attach that. So now I have my binding on one side and I just did a straight join right there if you saw that. I didn't do the uh, typical binding method, I just did the straight join because it's a small project and I think that looks fine. If you need a little more in-depth help, make sure to check out our video on binding. Um, and now I'm just going to wrap this around the front and finish this project off. so much for joining us in the hive today as we put together this adorable little project bag. Now, like I said earlier in the video, I wanted my project bags to go together really quickly because I need a lot of them and I wanted the sizes to be adjustable. So let me show you how easy this is. So this one is the smaller bag, which I'll be making 16 of these as I'm doing 16 cross stitch patterns. And I have just a um, metal wire bin that I found at Target in the $3 bin and I measured before I started I measured what would stand up straight in this bin so these are absolutely perfect for that so if you have a space that you know you want um, to store these grab it and measure and kind of tailor your bags to be around that but let's say you've got a bigger project or you've got a quilting project that you want to throw your cut pieces into as you are collecting them. These are, I mean, absolutely adaptable. This is a larger size. Now in our video that we did last year of the easy um, zipper bag, which we'll link down below, that's exactly what this bag is. The only difference is that I put the clear vinyl window at the top instead of that coordinating fabric. So this is see-through and still allows me to see what project is inside. The other thing that I did with this size, I attached a DMC um, 
spool floss holder to the outside with a piece of rickrack. You can use a re reusable sticker to label that or um, kind of dry erase marker, anything or wet erase would be really great on that material. And that way you could kind of have these standing up maybe on a bookshelf and easily see what pattern you're working on. So let's say, um, but you're, you're saying, but Kia, I have like, patterns that are eight and a half by 11 booklets. What do I do with a project bag if I need it to be even bigger? Let me tell you how simply this bag is adjustable. So you're just gonna need bigger materials, a larger zipper and a little bit more fabric and a little bit more vinyl. So what you can do, I've got this really super cute vintage Christmas sampler that will be one of my mania starts this year. You could lay this down and measure it. We know a typical piece of paper is about an eight and a half by 11. So you're gonna to wanna to cut your pieces of fabric, uh, your backing fabric around. I would give yourself about an inch and a half or a two inch gap all the way around. That way it easily slides in and out of your bag so you're not damaging your pattern. Now when you cut your backing fabric, so let's say that you cut your backing fabric about for an eight and a half by 11 um, pattern, you could cut your fabric at about 10 inches by 12 and a half or 10 by 13 and that would fit this uh, down inside of it. So you would need to, for the front of your bag, cut that in half, your uh, lengthwise. So if you're doing a 12 and a half inch uh, measurement, then you would wanna cut that in half, so it'd be six and a quarter, would be your vinyl size, and six and a quarter would be your um, outside fabric size. So let me show you exactly. So for a larger bag, you're just adjusting these according to what you've cut your backing. It's so super simple. You can really make them as small or as large as you need them. So I'm so excited to get a bunch of these quilted up so that I'm ready for Mania and all of our fun projects that we have going for that. We would love to hear from you down below and I hope if you have any questions that y'all feel free to um, stick them down below in the comment section. We'd love to continue the conversation there and uh, just kind of bring you into how easy this quilting project can be. Thank you all so much for joining us in the hive today and y'all have a great day.